every day I'm out in the woods, I, I find a new plant or I see a different way an animal lives, and it's, it's kind of a learning experience. Many Western New Yorkers are unaware that a nature preserve is practically in their backyard, where one could enjoy a peaceful walk through 275 acres of undisturbed forest and wetlands. The mature forest is interspersed with 19 ponds, marshes, and swamps that sparkle with colorful lily pods and are home to muskrats, busy beavers, and a variety of waterfowl, such as families of geese, and ducks, who ply these safe waters undauntedly. It is here we find virtually all species of wildlife native to western New York State, such as white-tailed deer, who have no great fear of man here in their sanctuary, as well as the majestic great blue heron, flying free and thriving under protection. It is a place where one takes only pictures and leaves only footprints. The Dr. Victor Reinstein Woods Nature Preserve in Cheektowaga off Como Park Boulevard. The site was part of the old Buffalo Creek Indian Reservation granted to the Iroquois tribe of Senecas after the Revolutionary War. It was gradually sold off to the Holland Land Company and the early settlers of Cheektowaga. Dr. Reinstein purchased the area for a private sanctuary in the mid-1930s. In 1986, the Reinstein family turned the site over to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Jeff Little of the DEC is a resident preserve manager. Just about any animal or bird that was ever native to western New York can be found here in the preserve. We have uh, white-tailed deer, wild turkey. We have an active beaver colony, uh, muskrats, mink, red and gray foxes. The list goes on and on and on. I can say the animals are tolerant rather than tame. They still know enough that if you try to get too close to them, they run away. The old story, curiosity killed the cat. Uh, they're very curious animals. They want to know what's going on, but they won't get too close. See her ears are up. She's listening, sniffing the air, just trying to find something that's, that's not quite right. This is a jack in the pulpit. It's another one of our sp spring wildflowers, but it does persist throughout the year. Um, I don't know, the pulpit is, in my mind, is the old preaching platform that the preachers used. And if you lift up this flap on this, you can see down inside, there's a little spadix in there, and that's Jack in the pulpit. I noticed that uh, a lot of timber fall here. You just leave it as is? You don't remove it? That's correct. Why? We, uh, we like to see what Mother Nature does. That's the whole point of this preserve. We're trying to present a picture of, of what happens when uh, man doesn't intervene. So this hole looks like somebody might have stuck a stick in here. It's actually where a turtle was, uh, turtle dug the nest last night and uh, deposited a number of eggs. You see some of the shells left here. Uh, it's not like a bird egg, it's more of a leathery shell. And sometime during the night, I imagine a, a raccoon must have smelled the nest and dug up the eggs. You see that there are uh, none left. Joining us on a nature trail in the Reinstein Woods Preserve was Charles Collitz, the DEC's Regional Citizen Participation Specialist, who was the project leader here. You'd have to travel many miles before uh, finding something like this to take a classroom to or just to take a walk. What was Dr. Reinstein's intent here, and then uh, just what has he accomplished for you people? Well, he has provided us uh, with a microcosm of native western New York life. Uh, all the way from the largest animal in here, which would be the white-tailed deer, on down to the small little shrews, and uh, there must be 150 birds in here, uh, different types, 125 or more different types of vegetation. There is also a section of wild cherry in here, which is probably has been reported to be the largest stand of native black cherry east of the Mississippi. And we're talking about maybe a million dollars that they can't be touched. That can't be touched. Snakes periodically molt as they grow bigger, and this is one of the skins that they have sloughed off and left behind. And you leave it there uh, 
for the tourists to see and they leave it. We leave it here if someone does desire to pick it up and see what it looks like, the bottom plates, the top, and then we leave it right back where it is for the next group. We only have guided tours. We right. do not allow people to come in here on their own and, and just wander around in the preserve. Between May 1st and September 1st, we have tours every Wednesday at 9 in the morning and 1 in the afternoon, and the last three Saturdays of the month at 9 and 1. Now, our winter hours are after September 1st, same days, Wednesdays and last three Saturdays, but we only have the 9 o'clock in the morning walk. Our number at the preserve is 683-5959. If people leave a message, I'll get back to them. People need to see something besides concrete and asphalt. This is where we all came from eventually. Uh, it's where you can come in and be at peace with nature. I think it's a very important part of anybody's life uh, to see the other side of it, and not just the nine to five that you do every day of the week.